Middle Jesus, and I'm back again with my wife, Rebecca. What's up? <laughs> and, you know, we didn't just roll out of bed like this. No, we are doing a special video on one of our favorite genres of music, and that is 80s hair metal bands. That's right, also known as butt rock, glam rock, and all those things from the 80s. And uh, we're kind of uniquely qualified to cover this, don't you think? All, all the lipstick and the makeup and total... Uh Total dudes looking like girls, but having awesome rock and roll. That's right. Well, because we grew up in the 80s and we we lived through this barely. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely was a party time. Oh, yeah. Mid 80s were a lot of fun. And so we have a lot of a lot of bands to cover here. And we're going to show you some albums, actual vinyl that we pulled out of our collection to show you. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. And as a special bonus, you're going to see a fairly embarrassing video of me. <laughs> It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad, but it's pretty cool. You get to see me rocking out when I was, I think in like, I don't know, ninth or 10th grade. It's gonna be pretty funny. Scary. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so right off the bat here, we need to talk about some bands that didn't quite make the top of our list, but we think they're they're good enough that we need to talk about them just we, really quickly. We definitely need to mention them, but we just don't have enough time to cover them in depth. Yeah, and one of them is on your shirt here. Yes. And that is the classic. Guns and Roses. You know, I don't really consider them hair metal per se. They started off as hair metal. Now you have their classic album, Appetite for Destruction. I do, which was my favorite album of theirs. Yeah. And I always felt they didn't, they weren't really hair metal. They kind of skirted the line between hair metal, rock, and metal. Yeah. Kind of all at once. So uh, that's why they're covered here, but they're not our, one of our top faves. Yeah. I mean, this is a great album, and mm -hmm. but the other albums after that kind of... Uh, not so much. Yeah, there's a couple, but yeah, this is it. This is it for me. Now, another album I have to cover here is Joe Satriani, Surfing with the Alien. That was epic. I love this album when it came out. Uh, it, it's an instrumental album. It, it, it totally sold me on, you know, widdly widdly guitar stuff. I mean, he did it better than everybody. <laughs> yeah, widdly 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 widdly. <laughs> so, Joe Satriani, Surfing with the Alien. What else you got? I got Poison. And Poison's definitely one of my all-time favorite bands. And speaking of dudes dressing up to look like girls, I mean, seriously, when I first saw this, I thought they were girls. <laughs> you know, we saw Poison just a couple years ago. They They're actually, awesome. They actually opened for Def Leppard. We saw them just a couple years ago. And I gotta say, I mean, they were freaking killer. They haven't lost it at all. No. So if you get a chance to see Poison, check them out. And then for me, the last one I wanna mention here real quick is Rat. My, not my favorites, but... <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Rebecca doesn't like Rat so much. Okay. I love Rat. I, I don't know what it is about them. Uh, they're pretty solid in the 80s. They had a lot of great hits. And so we just needed to, to kind of show these albums here yep. before we move on to the main list in some of our all-time favorite hair metal bands. So one of my favorite bands in the 80s that was hair metal has to be Dokken. Now, Rebecca's not a huge fan. They're the okay. The thing for me is that, you know, I remember coming home after school and you would you would immediately turn it on MTV, and they'd be playing the, like the top ten videos of the day. And this album right here, oh my God, Under Lock and Key had so many hits during that time when What's I was. What's your favorite hit off that off that album? Well, so many great ones. Uh, the Hunter in My Dreams was played. That that was a song that's pretty much played every yeah. day on MTV for a while. Um, it's not love. I don't know. It's a great album, and, and so I, I the special special place you in my heart. You got a guy crush. Got I got a guy, guy crush. Well, not only that, but George Lynch, who was the guitar player for this band, he had the coolest guitars. Do you remember in the eighties whenever they had like custom yeah, made guitars, like the Flying V? And well, and he had he had the skeleton guitar. It was it was basically oh, like and it was it was it, it was like three D. It was like this bones and stuff, and I don't know. It was just the that coolest. Was, that was a cool guitar. It was it was pretty cool. So what do you got? What do I got? I got scorpions, baby. Nice. Mm -hmm. Love me some mm -hmm. scorpions. Me too. Now, now for me, Worldwide Live is the definitive 80s live album. I mean, me and my cousin, when we were younger, we played this album to death. I mean, it's it's awesome. It, the energy is really excellent. And then the Scorpions just had a ton of great albums during the They years. really did. Well, Blackout, of course, great album. Mm -hmm. Plus, the song Blackout's really good. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite's awesome Dynamite. on there. Dynamite. Of course, The Ballad, Still Loving You, still one of my favorites. Well, and know, they had one of the greatest uh, 
80s hair metal songs during the 80s, which was uh, Rocky Like a Hurricane. Oh, yeah. And that was during the whole uh, apocalyptic video craze. Well, you know what I mean? When Mad Max and Mad Max Thunderdome with Tina yeah. Turner came out, it was it was a big, huge thing. It was a, it was the thing. And so. everybody did those videos. Kiss yeah. did the videos. Duran Duran did them. Yeah, I'm, Motley Crue did them. You know. Mo oh yeah, Motley Crue. <laughs> what was that one? I forgot. I know we were watching Motley Crue videos last night. It was pretty funny. Looks to kill. She's got the looks to kill. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Was okay, fun. so the next band, I I was absolutely just I I just I was a huge fan of them, and that is Bon Jovi and. They they put out Slippery When Wet. Now, I have a funny story to tell about this. I, I've told you a million yeah, times. Yeah. And essentially, I grew up in a very small town. And in that small town, there wasn't a lot of places to buy music. And so essentially, we bought them at the grocery store. I mean, it was really small. And I was in a I was in a phase where I was buying a lot of music like Led Zeppelin. I was going back, you know, going back to the 70s and even the 60s, buying the Beatles and stuff like that. So I'd go to this grocery store and I'd just buy everything that they had in stock. They didn't have a lot. And uh, anyway, so I was standing there one day looking at a Led Zeppelin album that I didn't own yet. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But this really cute girl from my school was standing right next to me <laughs> and she was looking at Bon Jovi. Of course. Of course, because they were, they were becoming really popular. And it, it, I just had this light bulb moment where I was like, do I buy Led Zeppelin? Which is what I really wanted. Or do I go for what's cool that the- Cool and new. Yeah, that the, that the cute girl uh, was, was uh, as you know, I, 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 I was all cool. I was like, excuse me, you know? And I kind of reached around her and I grabbed a copy of Bon Jovi and went up there and bought it. And I just thought I was so cool, right? But I mean, she's like, oh, he's so cute. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did she give, her, give, her, give you her Dude, I, I was too shy. I was too shy. I, all I could do was just pretend to be cool to buy the album. But needless to say, I actually was really into Bon Jovi at the time. I mean, this is a great album right here. This is also a really good one, too. This next band I was really into at the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is Whitesnake. And when this album came out, actually, my dad bought this album. Really? My dad bought this album because he thought it reminded him of Led Zeppelin. My dad was a big Led Zeppelin fan. So. Yeah. And there's definitely, you know, some similarities there. But, man, I was so into it. I'm going to show you how into it I was. You uh, you married that. You know, not much has changed, let's be honest. That's true. Although now you're on drums. Yeah, I'm on drums now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just as stupid. <laughs> but <laughs> that said, I, I, I still really like Whitesnake, actually. Oh, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. And, of course, I have... Slide It In. I know. That's a great album right there, too. Yeah, well, Slow and Easy and Slide It In. I mean, what could they be talking about? I'm I don't know. Really sure. White Snake. Hmm. Hmm. We're now down to our top three 80s hair metal bands. And, drum roll, please. Coming in at number three. <laughs> is Van Halen, 1984. That's a classic album right it there. It is a classic. And, again, for me, it was right in the middle of my high school years. Yes, I know I'm dating myself. But it was a an killer album. It was huge um, in, you know, all of the radio stations. Oh, Everybody yeah. loved Jump, it. Panama, Hot for Teacher. Hot for the Teacher is probably my favorite song. Yeah, that of, video was yeah, awesome, Of this too. album. I remember the first time I heard it again, I thought, <laughs> well, I was in high school. But I thought uh, I thought the drums was a real motorcycle. Yeah. I was like, is that a real motorcycle? It's funny. For me, when I first got that album, I, I put the, the needle on the record. And I thought it was skipping uh, it could, because it's got this right, really right. weird beat to it that, you know, it's just kind like, of a, whoa. It's a swing, but it's really fast. Yeah. yeah. So as great as Van Halen is, actually, the album that really influenced me was this bad boy right here, which was Eat Him and Smile yeah. from David Lee Roth. Yeah, totally. Uh, David, you know, as, as reserved as David Lee Roth wasn't in Van Halen, he went completely bananas. Off his meds. <laughs> he went off his meds. I mean, not yeah. only did his, his outfits get nuttier. I think he went to the women's, like, uh, like sport workout aerobic <laughs> section. Like and a spandex. He just stuff. I mean, it didn't even really match. I, I, I love that stuff so much. But it was all, it was great. And then he wears, you know, he'd wear like a thong over yeah. her, some spandex. Yeah, oh, like yeah. That. I mean, it's just, it's a, this is a great, fun party album. I love this to death. So we, these these are uh, these are our Van Halen references. Van Halen number three, number two. So this band we've actually kind of grown to like even more. I mean I love them in the eighties, but 
I didn't love them so much in the 80s, but when they became popular, I kind of moved on into more alternative, mm. like U2, R.E.M., those kind of bands. But as I've gotten older, I've definitely come to appreciate them, even like them a lot. And partially because they're great songwriters, they are a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and you just don't hear that kind of music in the in our current um industry yeah yeah i know in the current environment it doesn't seem like there's quite a band quite. similar to motley Crue. they were the originals baby yeah so too fast for love is the one you're holding there and i, I think you, you're holding it just because of the, the leather crotch shot there i don't know call me crazy i don't know i'm, I'm not really sure <laughs> what are they selling there what is that I, you know <laughs> <laughs> they need to pair up with white snake yeah I, yeah really but that's a great album. I mean, it's an awesome album. This has one of my favorite Molly Crew songs, which is Live Wire. Love mm. that song, and of course, Too Fast for Love. Yeah, Too Fast for Love. That's a that's almost kind of a, a mix of early LA rock and metal, and then punk. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a really cool album. Yeah. And then for this one, this is the one. This is the album that really kind of blew me away because uh, it's definitely a little bit more metal, maybe a little more hair metal, but it's also kind of evil. I mean, you know, shout at the, the devil. When I was really young, I was like, ooh. Oh, I know, the whole satanic So thing. satanic, I you know? Yeah, I was like, well, oh. it, it, I, it's got that song in here, uh, God bless the children of the beast. You know, yeah. I was like, "Oh, it's so naughty," you know. But uh, but but besides that, though, there's some great songs on here, like "Shout Out the Devil," "Looks a Kill," "Bastard," "Knock 'Em Dead." Dude, so many great songs. Too fast or uh, too young to fall in love. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Ten second, hot, dude, red hot. So many good. And look at this, fold out, fold out, baby. Mm. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> It was really tough coming up with number one because there's so many amazing albums out there. However, we came up with one and that's that's simply because I don't personally, myself, I dedicated years to this band. <laughs> I think we all did, pretty much. Much to the annoyance of my friends at the time because <laughs> I, I played these albums every day, all day long, and that is Def Leppard's Pyromania and Hysteria. Two all-time favorite yeah. stars. And again, we have seen, seen them in concert and they are yeah. fabulous. Check them out. Of course, Hysteria, mm -hmm. everybody knows Hysteria. You know, we have Love Bites, Animal, Rocket, uh, oh, Pour Some, some Sugar On sugar Me, on one of my night. personal faves. Mm -hmm. We actually tried to play that song in our band. But it it's has like 12 million guitars on yeah, it. Yeah, it's so. so overproduced. It's like it's impossible to, to duplicate with just me on guitar. It sounds really lame. We yeah. were really bummed because you were learning the, oh, the, man, the drums. Oh man, yeah, I'd love to do that. So Yeah, and everyone knows that song too. If you play guitar, give us a call. Yeah, that's true. Well, we need like 16 people. Well, yeah. we would, but it'd be worth it. It'd be totally worth it. And then of course for me, Pyromania as well. I remember listening to Casey Kasem's Top 100 yeah. every week and there, and I, you know, it's funny cause you would hear like the Whitney Houston's, you'd hear the Billy Ocean's. Your favorite. Yeah, not my favorite. But in the middle of all that music would be like a Def Leppard song that would totally kick and ass. You, that's what you would listen for. You didn't care yeah, about the I didn't, other crap. Yeah, exactly. I'd be listening every week to hear for this. The one yeah. like Def Leppard song. And I remember hearing a uh, photograph and Rock of Ages, you know, ooh, talk, leap, glout, you know. <laughs> I should grab yeah. my cowbell. I know. Yeah, it's a like cowbell it. song. All right. So that is hopefully our epic video on our favorite 80s hair metal bands, including Def Leppard. And Molly Crew. Yes. Now, we would love to know if you guys like this video and like to see other genres covered. Let us know, because we love dressing up. Yeah, specifically disco. If you want to see me in a laser suit, uh, uh. or you don't want to, you know, definitely, you know, say, say so. But I don't I, know. I don't know. Disco might be fun. Could be. Yeah, could be. Well, thanks for watching and thank you for subscribing. Rock on. Arrgh. You okay? What did you do?